Hello, everybody. Welcome back to House of Games. I am Richard Osmond. What a week we are having. At the end of the week, somebody is walking away with this awful trophy. Who is it going to be? It's going to be one of these. Alex Brooker, Sophie Duker, Charlotte Hawkins, and David Baddiel. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Alex Brooker, as I live and breathe, yes. Wednesday's champion. How did that feel? Great, and also to know that I did something that Josh Widdicombe couldn't do when he was oh, on this show. It's really... Josh went five days, yeah. not a win. He was gutted. Yeah, and I love the luggage as well. I'm just oh. going to walk into last leg one day with the luggage. Oh, <laughs> I would pay to see that. I really, really would. That would be delightful. Sophie, now, you and Charlotte yet to win a day, but mm. you've both been close. You've both been within a point. Come on, today is the day for one of you, surely. I agree. I agree. Beautiful. <laughs> Listen, uh, in theory, Sophie, it's a beautiful plan. That's all I need from you. Oh. Just because <laughs> what you're saying to me is I'm focused. Charlotte, yes. you also, you were one point off winning uh, on Monday. So you've, I know. you've surely you've got to win in I you. was so lonely there. I don't know. I mean, I listened to Alex's heartfelt speech mm. and I just thought, <laughs> someone's got to be bottom. And I thought maybe, you know, for his sake, I should just take that position. <laughs> and I let you do that. So. Well, let's take a look. I like to think of you in fourth. Charlotte, if, uh, if I may be so bold, just off the medals. That's where you are at the moment. Sophie, you are third, Alex, you're second, and David still with a nice little lead at the top, but we have two days to go, including double points Friday. David? Hi. Two wins. Nice in a way to... Someone takes a tiny bit of pressure off by... I uh, felt there was a lot of tape but deal down bad energy <laughs> knocking about this studio. It's yeah. gone now. I mean, if you thought that winning two shows in a row brought bad energy, three shows in a row, yeah. oh, my goodness. Don't miss oh, it. No, it's, it's absolute carnage. It's just not worth it. It really isn't worth it. Now you're allowed to win again. Um, <laughs> should we take a look at today's prizes? I wonder what you'd like to go for. There's the onesie, the yoga mat, the laundry basket, the alarm clock, or the fondue set. Oh, it might change, depending on how I feel by the end, if I do win, but I'm going to say <laughs> the fondue set, just yeah. because it's such a weird thing. It's good, the fondue set. Charlotte, what would you go for? I think, for me, an extra alarm clock for Good Morning Britain would be oh, handy. Oh, my goodness. You can never have enough. Perfect. Sophie? I'm flexible. I like a yoga mat. Lovely. <laughs> a yoga mat for Sophie. Uh, Alex? The onesie. The onesie. Yeah. Look at him now. Now he knows he can win. Yeah. It's, really, it's like a real thing now, isn't it? Yeah. Good actually have it. Yeah. So let's get on play Thursday's House of Games, shall we? We've had two separate winners this week. It would not surprise me to see if we have a third separate winner today. Our first round is... Mouse of Games. Now, you see, we've taken the name House of Games and we've changed it by one letter to make Mouse of Games. Now, we are going to do that now with some children's books. We're going to take the titles of the children's books, change them by one letter, and we'll give you the synopsis of the new children's book. Alex, we'll start with you. The residents of the Hundred Acre Wood go on adventures with Mickey's girlfriend. Oh, yeah, I get it. Um, so, is it Minnie the Pooh? Minnie the Pooh? Winnie the Pooh becomes Minnie the Pooh. Well done. <laughs> Sophie, a children's book for you, but changed by one letter. In this Dick King Smith classic, animal lover Harmony Parker is granted a wish every time she rubs the garden watering apparatus at Buckingham Palace. OK. The garden watering apparatus is a hose. This is slightly harder than Winnie the Pooh. I said, yeah. but you had to go I first. I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> she rubs um, Dick Kingsmith. Um, Pose. Time yeah, I can't. There's a bonus here. There is a bonus, yep. Yeah. David. I think it's the red hose. Is it the red hose? It's no. not, I'm afraid. It's not. Can I get. I might as well have to buzz in. Yeah. Is it the Queen's hose? Queen's hose? Oh, the. Oh! The Queen's oh. nose becomes the Queen's oh. hose. Yes. Well done. Queen's nose. She used to rub the Queen's the nose. The Queen's nose she? on yeah. the coin. Charlotte, one yes. for you now. We've changed the children's book by one letter. While on a maritime voyage, a girl called Sophie receives a surprise visit from an endangered big cat who eats his way through all her ship's supplies. Uh, is it the... Tiger who came to sea? Well played, Charlotte. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. The tiger who came to sea. The tiger who came to sea becomes a tiger who came to sea. David Baddiel. Now, a very, very renowned children's author. I'm going to go you. on record as saying best selling. Yeah. Thank million you. selling, they say. A children's book for you. In this spooky story by Gillian Cross, a school principal with mind control powers must hide the fact that he is secretly a citrus fruit. Oh dear. 
One of the things about me and children's books... Brooke is on the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> Duke is, is on the is buzzer. I made a Hawkins point of not reading any other children's <laughs> author before I started writing them. You know, I didn't want to be influenced, oh, and so yeah, I yeah. know virtually nothing about any other children's books. I don't know who Duke, this book, I don't think, by Julian Cross. Is Lemon involved in the title? The Lemon Benders. <laughs> is it The Lemon Benders? I've just shouted it. I hope that that's right. Sophie wins the buzzer race. The lemon headmaster. The lemon oh. headmaster, the demon headmaster becomes the lemon headmaster. Well played, <gasps> Sophie. Alex, what yes. we've done next, they're taking some nature and science programs. Okay, Ooh. we've changed them by one letter. Okay, uh -oh. what is this nature and science program? David Attenborough narrates a landmark BBC series about how Damon Albarn's band <laughs> live in their natural habitat. Ah, uh, um, I thought I'm going to get this wrong then. Oh, I know. Is it Planet Blur? Planet Blur, you're going Blur. for? Or Planet Blur? No. Incorrect, I'm afraid, David. The Blur Planet. The Blur uh, Planet uh, is planet. the answer. Oh, yeah, the Blue Planet becomes the Blur Planet. <laughs> um, lucky Alex. Mm. Um, Sophie, a nature or science programme for you. Michaela Strachan and the team used night vision cameras to catch cute footage of pieces of twine. OK, twine. Yarn, string, oh, what's it called? Should we time you out? Yeah. OK, we'll time Sophie out, and anyone who wishes to buzz in can buzz in. Looks like Charlotte Hawkins at the moment. <laughs> Charlotte. What is that? String watch. String oh, watch. Oh, my God, it's that. that. Spring watch becomes that. string watch. Well played, <sighs> Charlotte. <laughs> uh, and, Charlotte, it's now your turn. So Tony Robinson and a dedicated team of archaeologists uncover centuries of history whilst remaining totally silent inside a pretend glass box. Time team, it's time something. Time. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on. Hold on a minute. Mime team. Oh, well it. played, Charlotte. <laughs> the mime team or mime team. <laughs> time team becomes a mime team. <laughs> I have gutted you three were there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well played. David, last question of the round. It goes to you. In this long-running show, Patrick Moore gives tips on where to hear the best Jamaican music on an evening out. OK, that's confusing. <laughs> OK. Cos I can say that the show is The Sky at Night, I assume. Oh, <laughs> I've helped them. I've helped them. <laughs> You two should do Strictly. I was like... <laughs> so beautifully coordinated. Oh, I've got it. The Scar at Night. The Scar at Night <laughs> is well played. thinking reggae rather than Scar. Yeah. Yeah. The Scar at Night is absolutely the answer. Well played, David. Um, that's the end of our first round on Thursday's House of Games. Eventful stuff. And it leads us to this leaderboard. Sophie, you have one point. Alex and David have two. Our early leader, Charlotte oh. Hawkins, with three points. Well played, Charlotte. <laughs> Nicely done. Let's go straight into our pairs game, shall we? Today's pairs game is going to be... <laughs> totes emoji. And a pairs game, of course, the player in last place chooses their partner. Sophie, today that is you. Who would you like to play with today? Um, Charlotte. Ah. Playing with Charlotte. Uh, Sophie and David, why don't you swap places, please? David and Alex are a team. Sophie and Charlotte are a team. David, welcome down to this end of the studio. Yeah, it's lovely to lovely be here. Lovely to have you here. Now, before the show, I asked you all to send me the name of an action movie, but using only emojis. You are now going to have to decipher the emojis your partner sent to me. David, we will start with you. Alex, before the show, sent me the name of an action movie using these emojis. But what action movie is it? A martial arts film, I reckon. I mean, I don't know that many martial arts films. Oh, is it that Jackie Chan one? I can, I can see, like the trailer in my head, but I can't remember the title. No, so I'm sorry, Alex. I'm letting you down here. Yes, yeah, so you time you out, David. No, I haven't got it. It's no. gone. We don't hand over points on this round, but Sophie, if you were to guess, is it Rush Hour? Rush Hour. Rush Hour, yeah. right? As soon as you said Jackie Chan, and then yeah. you look at the. Man yeah. running and the yeah. and the clock. It's a good set of emojis, but yep. I couldn't remember it. Rush hour. Well done if you said that at home. Sophie, before the show, Charlotte sent me uh, the name of an action film. 
So these were the emojis which Charlotte sent. OK, so... Uh, yeah. Cars are fast and that face is furious. So is oh, it the Fast oh, and the Furious? Is it the Fast and Furious? Yeah. That's so good. Well played. <laughs> fast and look at that's such a good clue. Well, well, well done. <laughs> well worked and out. Well played, right. Sophie. Yeah, terrific work. Alex, before the show, David sent me the name of an action film. But which action film is this? If this is Rush Hour 2. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey. Yeah. Um, Say what you see. <laughs> so it's, oh. it's a guy slapping himself on the head. Huh. I take it this is just the title, not the plot. I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be quite a short film. Yeah. yeah. The plot. Man looks at camera, then he hits yeah. himself in the face. It's a short film. Oh, hang on a minute. It's like, is it? No, it's not face off. Mm. Face off. Face off. Is it face off? Face off. Is it face, face off? off? It is face off. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Face off. Thank you very much, Alex. What's the, what's the second one? Well, it was very interesting because I never use emojis, right? So I right. went for the yeah. most standard face I could find yeah. and then someone covering up their face. Yeah. As like face, no more it's... face, face off. That's amazing. Beautifully done. Yeah. Yeah. Do I get just... anything for that or is it just... Yeah. I do, yeah, I, but, yeah, I get yeah, a little bit as well. It's a pair scan. <laughs> oh, great. We both, we both worked point. together oh, on this great. one, Alex. <laughs> Honestly, it would be weird if I didn't give you a point for that. <laughs> <laughs> If I want, yeah, yeah no, you're not getting one. Oh, for that. you were so apologetic to me. Well uh, before. Very right. well good, played, gentlemen. Good stuff. Charlotte, before the show, Sophie sent me uh, the name of an action film, yep. but she only used emojis. So, which is this film, please? Italian job. Oh. Italian job. It is. Oh, well done. It plays. That was great. Right. <laughs> That's absolutely perfect. Well done if you said that at home as well. Uh, the Italian job. Uh, that's the end of that round. David and Sophie, if you'll swap back places, please. David, lovely to have you down here. Sophie, lovely to have you back. Lovely to be back. Uh, let's take a look at the um, leaderboard, shall we? Two rounds down on Thursday's House of Games. It's very, very close. Look at this. Alex, Sophie, David, you will have three. Charlotte Hawkins, our leader with five. Well played, Charlotte. Thank you. Are we going to have our third different winner of the week, I wonder? Let's play our next round, shall we? It is... It's all in the name. In this round, uh, all the answers are contained within the letters of your names. OK? Fingers on buzzers, everybody. The first two questions, the answers will be somewhere within the letters of Alex Brooker. If you buzz and give me a correct answer, you score one point. Alex, if you buzz and get one right on your name, you score two points. Music composition by Ravel that Torben and Dean performed to at the 1984 Winter Olympics. That is Charlotte. Bolero. Bolero. Well done, Bolero. Bolero in your name. Next one. London Underground Line that is coloured brown on the tube map. That is Sophie. Bakerloo. No way. <laughs> Wow, you got Baker Lou in your name. <laughs> Did you know that? Well, almost. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Sophie. And now the next two are in the name Sophie Duca. Sophie, two points if you can get one of these, one point for anybody else. Ricky Gervais sitcom in which Carl Pilkington plays Dougie. <laughs> yes, David. Derek. Derek? Correct, it is Derek. Well done. <laughs> Next one. Two points, Sophie, if you can get this. Sea duck, who's down, is often used to fill pillows and quilts. Nobody? So I tell you. Ida is the answer. Ida down. The next two, Charlotte, are in your name. So Charlotte Hawkins. Two points if you can get one of these. One point for anybody else. Ancient Greek philosopher and scientist who taught Alexander the Great. Sophie. Socrates. Socrates? Not. It does look like that's in there as well, doesn't it? Uh, Charlotte. Is it Aristotle? Aristotle. Two points, Charlotte. Well done. Aristotle tucked in there. Next one, two points for Charlotte uh, again, if she can get this. Multi sport race in which Alistair and Johnny Brownlee compete. Yes, that is Alex. Triathlon. He loves the sports. 
Triathlon is the right answer. David, the next two the answers are within your name. So the letters of David and Badil. Two points, David, if you can get one of these. One point for anybody else. A claim or piece of evidence needed to prove that you were not present when a crime took place. Yes, Sophie. I've got lots of these. Alibi. Alibi. Well done. Alibi is the answer. And final question in this round. One point for anyone, two points for David. Epic poem by Homer set during the Trojan War. Yes, Sophie. Iliad. The Iliad. Well played is the Iliad. Nicely yeah. done. Very nicely done. Let's take a look at the scores, shall we? That's made a difference, I'm going to say. David and Alex are two champions so far this week. You are currently tied third with four points. Sophie, you have six. Charlotte stood out in the lead. Eight points. Well played. <laughs> very, very close. Two rounds to go. Let's take a look, shall we, at what round four is going to be today. Question writers' day off. Now, our question writers you've seen all week are brilliant, so occasionally we give them a day off. And when we do, their children write the questions. <laughs> children, nieces, nephews, all sorts of things, but they genuinely do. So the questions for this round have been written by uh, the following children. From Fraser, age three, up to Dom, age 11. They write questions. They also give me little notes about the questions that they wrote, why they wrote them and so on, where they learnt them. Alex, whose question would you like to start with? I think that I'll go with Nola. Nola. I'm going to say the queen. I was about to say the queen of question writers' day off, but the <laughs> princess of question writers' day off, Nola. And it's Nola's question. What's the best thing about Matilda? The film will... The film must be the film. She's not read the book, has she? She's four. Uh, occasionally, uh, children have books read to them by significant adults. Really? Yeah, so I'm sorry <laughs> to break that to you. <laughs> um... Oh, the bits I know about Matilda is, like, she gets, like, family at the end, doesn't she? She gets a nice lady. She gets, she gets like, adopted at the end, that bit. I don't know, she gets a family. You're going to go for her family? Yeah, family. OK, family Nola, there. is the answer her family? It is not. Anybody else want to buzz in? Charlotte. Is it her superpowers? I think I'm going to accept that. Nola's answer is her magic eyes. Mm. So, Aww. absolutely right. Well done, Charlotte. Point to you. Uh, Nola says, uh, Matilda is a really good book. But, but, if you are reading it to your child, don't make Miss Trunchbull sound too scary with a big voice. Aww. It's Nola's note there, which is a very good <laughs> note. Thank you, Nola, as always. Sophie, I wonder who you'd like to go with. I think I'm going to go for Ella. Ella, age seven. Ella's question. Where is the thickest skin on your body? Ooh. Good question, isn't it? Yeah. It's a really good question. It makes me feel like Ella knows the answer. Oh, Ella knows the answer. Um, I don't know the answer. I would say that the thickest skin on your body is probably in your feet. In your feet? Do you want to the soles of your feet. Sole of the foot. Let's take a look. The sole of your foot. Yeah. Well done. Thank you, Ella. Well done, Sophie. Well done, Ella. Ella says, this is science. I read <laughs> it in my science book. It's really interesting. She's quite right. Well done, Ella. Charlotte, I wonder who you'd like to go for. I will go for Thomas, who's six. Thomas. Yes. Six. OK, yeah. What are the name of the two people on F2 Freestylers Football on YouTube? What? No, oh. no idea. I mean, Bill and Bob, no idea. <laughs> Bill and Bob? No. <laughs> Let's take a look. <sighs> no. It's not. Anyone else? I mean, to be fair, Thomas, really good question, but also absolutely predicted this. Thomas says, probably no one would know the answer to this, says mm. Thomas, and you're absolutely right. It is Billy and Jezza. Mm. Billy and Jezza. David, one for you. Who would you like to go with? Let's go for Fraser 3. Oh, Let's go with the 3-year-old. I just want to see what the 3-year-old's question it's is. It's a really good question. Right. You've chosen very well. This is Fraser's question for you. Thank you so much, Fraser. How do you cook sausages? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, there there are a number of ways. I'm not sure mm. Fraser's aware of that, but I... Fraser's very aware of it. <laughs> oh, he, just, he? he has a very specific answer he wants from you. I'm going to go for fry. <laughs> Is the answer fry? Oh. not, I'm afraid. Anyone else? How do you cook sausages? <laughs> Alex. Oven. Oven? <laughs> you do not cook them in an oven. You don't fry them, you don't cook them in an oven. Where else would you cook them? 
Uh, Charlotte. It's barbecue. Barbecue, the answer? It no. is inside oh. the barbecue, Charlotte. Well done. Thank you, Fraser. Fraser's note for his question is, sausages are my favourite. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Fraser. Um, Alex, oh, who would you like to go with? So I, might go, so I might go with Dom. Go with Dom. You're going 11. Dom's question is this. What is two in binary? I don't know. I thought he was going to ask something about <laughs> computer games or something. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to go, like... All like mathematical on me. Yeah, uh, you've been done by Dom now. Yeah, I have, absolutely. I've got no idea. I've not stopped nope. thinking about this stuff when I was eleven. <laughs> Two in binary is it binary numbers? I, it's like I've got no idea. I haven't done that sort of stuff. Time years. you out? Yeah, time me out. Every time you out. Anyone else fancy go? This what is two in binary? <laughs> Sophie. You don't get twos in binary. That's a very clever answer, but it's not. We're, we're, there, there is an actual answer here. Yeah. We're looking for. David. Is it zero, zero? Is it zero, zero? It is not Charlotte. I have no idea. It is... I can't even guess. <laughs> OK, let's take a look. Two in binary is one, zero. Oh. Very well played, Dom. Absolutely did them there. Dom says, I learnt this in computing at school. It is interesting because it's finding out about the brain of the computer. Mm. Ah, thank you, Dom. Sophie, I wonder whose question you would like. Joseph's, please. Joseph, age seven, Joseph. Joseph asks, what is the surname of Ron in the Harry Potter series? Weasley. Weasley? There you go. Classic oh, you. question from Joseph. Joseph says, I visited Harry Potter World for my birthday last year and I loved it. That's mm -mm. what Joseph Why did I have to, to get say? the kid that's in Mensa? <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte. Who are you going to choose? Could I go for Milo, please? You could go for Milo, absolutely. Milo's question is this. This is a good question, Milo, as well. How many working funnels did the Titanic have? Um, uh, you know, obviously, I would know how many funnels it has, but how so many working, working funnels. funnels is a different matter. Um, three? Three you're going for. Is that the correct answer? That's the way to oh. play House of Games, Charlotte. Well You're done. On fire, Charlotte. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Midoff says there are actually four on the boat, but only three of them work because one of them is just for decoration to make the boat look nice and so that people think it goes faster than it does. Mm. I learnt about the Titanic at school in Miss Spencer's class. I like Miss Spencer. Yeah. Thank you, Milo. David, you're going to go for Raphael? I am, yeah. Um, Raphael has this question for you. Who was the first children's laureate, not poet laureate? Mm. This is Raphael. I don't know when it was established uh, as a thing, Children's Laureate, and how far it goes back. I'm going to say Roald Dahl. I'm not sure it's right. A Roald Dahl, is that correct? It's not, I'm afraid. It's not far off. Anybody else fancy a crack? Alex. Enid Blyton. Enid Blyton? It is not. Anybody? Is it Quentin Blake? Do you want to buzz in? Quentin Blake? Is it Quentin Blake? It is oh. Quentin Blake. Oh. Very well done. And Raphael says, when I wrote this question, the children's laureate was Cressida Cowell. That's the end of that round. A uh, round of applause to the children for writing the questions. Thank you so much. One round to go. How's it looking on Thursday? Alex and David oh. staying down there on four. Oh, we have got a battle <laughs> on our hands here. Sophie, you have nine. Charlotte, you've got 11. That's exciting. Yeah, One so round hungry. to go. That round is... Answer smash. Gents, you might be a tiny little bit too far behind here, I suspect. You both won a day. Sophie, Charlotte, I suspect today belongs to one of you. Fingers on buzzers, please. Everybody, point for a correct answer, point off for an incorrect answer. Your first category is... Boy bands. Uh, there'll be a clue, there'll be a boy band underneath. Please smash them together. What nickname was given to the cold weather spell that hit the UK and Ireland in February and March 2018? Oh, yes, Charlotte. Beast from the E17. Beast from the E17. <laughs> nice. Great start for Charlotte Hawkins. Nicely done, Beast from the E17. Next boy band. Which Channel 4 quiz show has been hosted by William G. Stewart and Sandy Toxvig? Yes, David. 15 to 1 direction. <laughs> 15 to 1 direction is correct. Well done. 
15 to 1 on One Direction. Next boy band. In which 2009 biographical film does Aaron Taylor Johnson play John Lennon? Yes, David. Nowhere Boy Zone. Nowhere Boy Zone? Well done. Nowhere Boy and Boy Zone. Well played, David. Another point to you. Our next category is boxers. Those will be the pictures. There'll be clues above. Hanoi is capital city of which Asian country? Yes, Alex. Uh, is it it's Kashmir? It is no, not. No, it's I'm not. Afraid. It's um... I'm so oh, sorry. no, what am I on about? Lose a point. David. Prince Viet Nassim? <laughs> no, no, no. It is no, not, I'm afraid. I've... Anyone else want to go? Can I, let... I won't give you a point, Alex, but you can tell us the answer. Vietnam Air Khan. Vietnam Air Khan is right. Vietnam and Ami Air Khan. Uh, well done if you said that at home. Next one. What is the name of the Queen Bee character played by Rachel McAdams in the 2004 film Mean Girls? Yes, Alex. Is it Rebecca George Foreman? It's not. You lose a point, Sophie. Regina George Foreman. Regina George ah. Foreman? Very well done. Oh. Here's your next boxer. Clark Kent is the alter ego of which superhero? Yes, Alex. Super Manny Pacquiao. Super Manny Pacquiao? Yeah. That's fun to say, isn't it? <laughs> Super <laughs> Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> Absolutely right. Superman and Manny Pacquiao. But here is your next category. <laughs> we are done for the day. We are done for the day. I think we have a new champion on our hands. Who is it going to be? David's won two, Alex has won one. Who has won Thursday's House of Games? Two points today. Oh, Charlotte Hawkins is your champion. Well done, Charlotte. <laughs> Very nicely done. Another second place for Sophie there. David in third, Alex fourth. Charlotte, you've won yourself a prize. I am delighted. Shall we remind ourselves of the prizes? Charlotte, will you go for the alarm clock or have you, have you changed your mind? No, I'm going to stick with the alarm clock. Lovely. Charlotte oh, Hawkins wins the House of Games alarm <laughs> clock. Congratulations. <laughs> You're our third separate champion of the week. One day to go. Double points Friday tomorrow. Let's take a little look at our leaderboard going into that double points Friday. Well, looky here. Literally everybody can still win this. David, you are 13. Sophie, you haven't had a, a day's win yet, and yet you're in and second yet. place. Charlotte and Alex both on nine points. Now, tomorrow, eight points for a win, six for second, four for third, and so on. So this trophy could still go to any one of the four of you, and that is very rare at this stage mm. of the week. Usually someone is miles behind. Mm. Well played, everybody. Congratulations, Charlotte, Thank as well, you. on your win. I'll see you all here, same time, same place, for the final tomorrow. We'll see you as well, same time, same place, on the House of Games. <laughs>